involved in this RAF Meteor 8 interceptor fighter are two of the new Sapphire jet engines, the most powerful ever designed. Indeed, one Sapphire, I'm told, has just about the same power as all four engines of a Super 4. Certainly a great leap forward in jet engine development, and it's British. In addition, the Sapphire is relatively easy on fuel consumption, and that means increased range. Squadron leader Jan Zurakovsky, last test pilot, was chosen to demonstrate the aircraft at Farnborough too. He's reported as saying that it will outclimb any machine in the world. Hi everyone. I know what's in the box. Just come from Hornby. Uh, I've had it on pre-order for quite some time. I'm going to open the box right now. And I thought, if I don't get it today, which is Thursday, I won't get it till Tuesday. <laughs> because of the bank holiday. Uh, if I can open this. Come on. Uh, doesn't want to open. <laughs> oh, that's why. Right. It'll go along that way. There we go. The box is quite big. Uh, I say the box is quite big. What we get in here is this, which is the Meteor. I've been waiting for this. But look what box they sent it in. And look at the packing. This is all packing. There's nothing else in the box. Absolutely nothing. It's all packing. I mean, it's, my elbow's just there. That's how deep the box is. Don't they waste money? Okay? Don't they waste money in packing? That more glue as well with that bit back here. Well, there we have it. Quick look at what we've got here. We've got the Meteor. Right, uh, 148 scale. Um, it is actually quite a small plane, believe it or not. Uh, when I had it in card, which I still got it in card actually, it's, no mu it's not much bigger than a Spitfire, but it uses a twin engine jet fighter. So, uh, uh, there we have it. Right, let's open this box to see what we've got inside, shall we? Because this is going to be the review as well. Let's have a look on the side first. We've got some CAD drawings of the uh, model itself in pre-formed. It's also got very small letters just here. I don't know. Can I bring it in and show you? Let me come in. You're going to focus on that. There we have it. Cardograph decals in it so let me just come back out again come on back out come on that's it uh, again lovely picture on the front he does do some good work that artist uh, Tony something isn't it actually this time looking at it it might not be his well it probably is but there is no signature on it which is usually a signature on here saying it's one of his paintings. So, not that there. Oh, well, the other side's got a couple of um, paints on it and, uh, oh, three flying hours as well. Building up those flying hours at the moment. Right, we have a box and it is actually a fairly full box. Uh, put those to one side because they're the instructions. And that, we'll get those out next and leave those to a bit. Have a look at the instructions first. And the new format for uh, let's put those to one side. Where well, yeah, fix uh, showing uh, a bit of history on the front, uh, safety instructions and assembly instructions here. And you can see they've done it. The red uh, I've seen people say, but the red is what you've done on the previous one, so it shows you what you need to put on and where you need to put it on. You see, here's the red in previous, then these two side pits have got to go on, and uh, go throughout the uh, build like that. I'll have to have a look at that. Looks like it's got silk seat belts built in, uh, or moulded in, I should say. We'll have to look at that when we come to the parts. Um, we've got a decal for the uh, instrument panel, 
again we'll look at that uh, see what details on it uh, we do have the gun panel on the side which we can open up and uh, have that open wheels up or down also I do know you can have one of the engines in and one out so you can display the engine separately which is quite good uh, jet exhausts again we've got the seam down the middle of them um, I think you've all seen previous on my build about this uh, we can take the seam out of it quite easily uh, although it's a bit of extra work to do um, the aftermarket boys might jump on this one uh, especially when you've got the quite a good interior cockpit on here there's a lot of moldy detail it looks like and of course you've got the guns on the outside as well they'll probably photo etch those or whatever brass barrels um, they'll probably do a lot in there hopefully they will anyway uh, a few holes to drill in the wings depending on what you want to do <coughs> uh, top wings on cockpit tub in which is nice to have actually a cockpit tub to put in there uh, makes life a lot easier uh, two fuselage half to go you've got 15 grams of weight to go in um, probably up that a little bit to 20 grams at least uh, See if we can get, see if we can, get, can get 20 grams in there. Um, separate rudder. Elevators are separate. Ailerons are separate, so there's all movable surfaces. Um, flying surfaces, all movable. And uh, hopefully they've got these cones right this time. Unlike the. Um, Canberra where those cones were really bad right we've got the engines we can put together we can either have we're not put no engines in just put the covers on and paint it we can have both engines in with the covers that can come off or one engine in and one engine out and uh, got radiators in there there's a lot of cable there's a lot of detail to the engines um, I'm saying a lot of detail there's probably a lot more detail if you uh, once the aftermarket people get onto it uh, this is ah there's a cage here for the the engine that's standing outside so you make up a sort of museum piece of it uh, as they would put an engine outside sometimes like that uh, Again, the wheel wells look a lot detailed in that. They look a lot detailed. I don't know whether they will be or not. We'll have to see when we actually build it. But there seems to be quite a lot of detail inside them. There. Uh, nose cone going together. Wheel up or down. Landing gear inside it. There's quite a... Again, there's a lot of detail on the front nose wheel. Landing gear. An awful lot. So, probably no brake shoes on it, you'll have to do them yourself. Air brakes up or down. Is that bottom and, yeah, bottom and top surfaces. Air brakes. Oh, right. So, you can have them up or down. Uh, side panels, again. Yeah, well, you don't, you, if you've shown off the guns, they wouldn't be attached. Uh, gun sight in here as well again detail on the cockpit tub looks good you'll see all these in a bigger sheet uh, when I do the photo I'll photo I'll copy these and put them on the end of this video so you can see a big sheet of them um, it looks like we've got some stuff to go into the canopy before it goes on uh, so a bit of paint in there before they go in so you don't want to <laughs> try and spray them in situ or paint them in situ uh, and that's it there is 98 build instructions on it so there's a fair old, fair old amount of build instructions it's not going to be a quick model to do 
So we'll put that one side. We've also got a couple of shiny sheets here. We'll just put these, which are the stencil data sheet here. Again, a lot of stencil data there. And also we've got the uh, paint sheet as well. We've got two lots on here. We have number 11, 111 Squadron, Royal Air Force, North Weald, 1954, which is the coloured version with the yellow tail, which is one I probably would go for. Um, 53, 56, so, so 56 is aluminium on the underside of it, so we can do some owl cladding on the underside, um, or whatever paints you like to do. Again, here we've got a total aluminium aircraft, uh, gunmetal matte black. It's the only other couple of paints on here, so I haven't seen a figure in this either. But, oh. Uh, I can't remember the company now, but the there's a company that does a resin figure, uh, an, an early 1960s pilot, jet pilot, that would fit lovely with this one. Uh, so that's those two. Oh, sorry, I forgot to tell you. It is the uh, 85 Squadron Royal Air Force, Brynbrook, Lancashire, Lincolnshire, sorry, Lancashire, Lincolnshire, England, 1968. Uh, Aircraft is now displayed at the Jet Air Museum at Gloucester. So we can go and have a look at this particular one if we wanted to. Actually, it's not bad. I did have a nip up there and have a look at it. Let's have a quick look at these. Right, now the decals, we know they're cardograph, although they don't, they don't actually say on here. There's common and a couple of other ones. As you can see, the detail sheet here is not very big. I'll try and come in on it a bit. For you, it's not that big. This one, um, as I said, the aircraft's actually quite a small aircraft, <coughs> even in 48 scale. Well, we have the cockpit instrument panel on here. The decals are very thin, I can feel them, but they're very thin. Um, look to be in register. Well, I, I wouldn't expect anything less than them, and the colours look right as well. So that's the decal sheet. Again, I'll put a bigger photograph of this at the end for you. Let me just come out and we'll have a look at the parts now. Right, as I said, this has just come through Thursday afternoon. Ah, I'm going to cut this bit up here because that's the bit that's... There. And we'll slide these out of here. Bag in there. Those are to one side, and we'll have a look at the parts now. Let's have a look at this big sheet first. That's the wings, wing tops. Again, got some nice raised detail in it, and recessed panel line. Now, the panel lining on this one looks very fine to me, and uh, having a quick look at it, can I come in? I don't know whether this will focus on this here. Let me just put this down, see if I can focus on this. Come, come in near me further. Focus you. That's the best it's going to do. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, that's the best it's going to do, this camera. I've got to get a new camera, but PC's are up and running first. Um, the recessed panel lining looks to be absolutely right for me. Um, I've, seen, I've, I've seen other people, they've done a review of the Bolton and Paul uh, Defiant one, and they said, Oh, did the, the, their recess panel lines are very deep. These ones aren't, these are nice and crisp. And sh uh, well, they're not shallow, but they're not that deep, if you know what I mean. So they're not over scale, not as far as I'm concerned. Uh, but other people may think they are over scale. The same with Bolton Paul one, uh, the Defiant. It, was, it looked like it was about right to me. But other people have said, oh no, they're too deep. Again, Airfix is doing them deep, but they're not that deep, honestly. Uh, they're very shallow. They're very shallow. It's their new new way of doing them. I think they've 
they've taken into account people saying, oh, the beautiful panel line I'm on it, but it's a bit deep. So they've actually stopped doing it so deep. Um, <coughs> some pin marks on this, but that's, uh, that's the top side, so you won't see those. Uh, no pin marks on there. There is no flash on this one. Again, the Defiant, my one had no flash whatsoever. But somebody else was doing a review and they had flash on this. So, you know, it was, it was only a tiny, tiny piece of flash. But mine didn't have any. This one doesn't have any. So, we'll take a look at the next one. Let me just pop that back in its box there. Which is the fuselage sides? No, we won't. Do, do the do the bottom wings because we're just on the top wings. Here we have the cockpit. There looks like a lot of detail in the cockpit sides here. A good deal. There's cables. There's uh, instruments. There's switches, uh, levers. There's quite a lot in there. Um, how correct it is, I don't know. I don't have the. Um, uh, I do actually have a profile of this, but I can't put my hands on it right now. <laughs> anyway, um, again, the panel lines look to be nice, crisp, and clean. Uh, again, not very deep, not really more to me. And as you can see, the wingspan isn't that big. As you compare it to a Spitfire, it's. Have I got one round it? I have got one round it. Hang on. Let me just. Oh, this is a good one. Just to give you an idea of size, here's a 148 Stuka. This is the wingspan of the Meteor 148 scale. Not that much difference really, but this is a much bigger aircraft. Um, the Meteor's longer, but uh, let me just pop that away. Up the way so. Don't get it broken. Right, go back to this. The wings, again, nice lining underneath it. There's raised and there is rivets on here, but they're very fine. Uh, nice recessed panel lining, um, not too heavy, and. Uh, Got a light in the side of the wing there. There's cockpit detail here. Don't know whether I'm coming. Let me try and get in on this. This camera isn't that brilliant, but there's quite a bit of detail in this uh, in this um, uh, cockpit. There's quite a bit of detail, and there's a lot of detail on the side bits down here as well. All along here, these have got all detail on it, and the same with this part here which has got the engine mounts on it and that and the gear wheel bay as well as in here and this is all gear wheel bay as well it's got a lot of detail in it so it's going to be a nice kit to uh, it's going to be a nice kit to do uh, doesn't look like there's any pin marks in any of that side there are pin marks on the inside of this though um, again looking at it there's none where the engines sit. There is a pin mark at the back here and it's raised, so we're going to have to take that off. And the same with this jet exhaust part here. When we put the jet exhaust in, this might interfere with the fit, so best take it off. Uh, even though you won't see it. Get it off, get it out of the way. Let's make sure the fit fits perfectly. I can see a tiny, tiny little edge of flash just here little tiny tiny bit but that'll come off with a one stroke of a sandpaper actually it's come off with my finger <laughs> that's, how, that's how tiny it was uh, again another nice sprue let's have a look at the fuselage next again we got this nice panel lining on it um, there is no rivet detail in this now somebody said about rivet detail there's a lot of rivet detail on this piece here, which is the, is that the elevators? That's the elevators. There's quite a lot of detail on the elevators there. 
bez a Oh, I didn't know whether I had that on camera. I'll, I'll take it back to you if I didn't. Uh, <coughs> nice rivet detail on these fairings, which are part of the wing section. These ones I've got a lot of rivet detail on, but the fuselage hasn't. Can't feel any rivet detail on the fuselage. Um, not the fin. The rudder, again, rudder part here. These two parts are rather down here. A lot of um, uh, rivet detail on those. These are the jet pipes here, very small. But they should be easy enough done. Both guns bays you can have open as well, or one open and one closed, depending on what you want to build it or how you want to build it. Uh, we'll come to the next piece here. Now, let me come out a way better. I was in a bit tight for that other one, but I think you saw everything. Um, again, we've got cockpit detail in here. Uh, gear doors, nice. They are they're no pin marks on the inside of the gear doors, so that's nice. Uh, seats. Let's see, front. Under cabbage part there, front under cabbage, another front under cabbage there. There's probably one folded, one opened for gears up or down. There's weight on wheels, which is nice. No separate hubs on them, so a little bit more work to do on those. The gun bays here, again, there's a lot of pipe work in the gun bays and some panel lining and all that in there, so they should be nice anyway. Um, Although the aftermarket boys will probably put a lot more in there. Uh, I'm looking at the seats. Right, we've got two seats here. We've got one. I think they're two seats. It's like the two seater one, is it? No, it's a single seater. Right, we've got one with belts and one without belts. So, I don't know where you can see those ones there. I'll have to get it up there. This one's got no belts, this one's got the belts on. Uh, Moulded in, so but there's no belts on the um, there's no belts on the decals, but there are other belts you can get. Um, I probably shouldn't promote them. I don't get anything for promoting them. So, but Edard do some nice cloth belts for the RAF, and they would go in this one very nicely. It would just give it that bit more detail in there and the molded in belts look good but they are molded in so you know uh, just put in separate belts in there whether they be photo etch or the soft cloth ones it would it would look look a lot better I think I might wait and get some of those for myself uh, that I think's the canopy piece that goes in there. there's a lot of work in there uh, nice detail here. Um, they may have, you may have to drill those holes out. I'm not sure. We'll have a look at the profile when I get it out to see if they drill those holes out in there. I'll let you know when I start building it. Uh, uh, dash panel, or instrument panel. A um, lot of raised detail on that. If you like hand painting it. You've got a nice lot of detail to do it with there. Uh, I'm having a look at the wheel arches. They, uh, the wheel doors, sorry. Uh, there are no pin marks on the open or closed wheel bay doors. But, again, nice. All in all, it's getting to be another lovely kit. Let's have a look at the next one. Now, this one, I'll, put, I'll have to put it up this way because of the cones for the engine. We've got four cones. Yes, that's right, four cones. And a couple of innards to go in it. Uh, got couple, we've got both engines here, so you can build both engines. Have one in situ with the... Um, 
hatch off so you can see the engine actually in situ and one beside the aircraft on the, on the frame which is here uh, again nice little detail air brakes look a bit they don't look very sharp those air brakes the outside is but the the holes in it don't look that sharp well that may be my eyesight um, I have to wait till somebody's it better in the know. Um, nice detail on the engine bits. I can say that now. And uh, good bit of weathering to do on the engines. Uh, for people who love weathering, it'll be a great, a great. Uh, great thing to do the weathering on these engines all the burn marks on them and that sort of thing uh, again no flash I'm looking at it for pin marks and there's no pin marks on this either so they're getting good with their pin marks that's the last grey uh, plastic and there's five of those and the six um, Sixth tree is the clear plastic, so we'll open this up. This is still in a separate bag there, and this is absolutely crystal clear. But that's a strange thing, isn't it, to have there? It's got a frosted piece on the back of this bubble here. Now, ah, now I think what we have here is another model we've got a clear canopy here crystal clear absolutely crystal clear uh, doesn't seem to be no sense of um, distortion in it even the front one doesn't look distorted uh, I'll just check that nope one of the canopies here has got a frosted back end to it which isn't in this particular build there's nothing it says in here. It's, where's that canopy goes on to? Right, canopy here. F2 and F9. So, F2 and F9. Yes, this one isn't being put on. So, that will mean that sometime in the future. They're going to have another one of these out, a different mark, and it must have this canopy painted on the back here, so you've only got the front half of the canopy clear. Uh, I'm not sure which one that is now. Again, my profile will help me sort that one out. If you've got a profile, you can have a look. But one of the canopies is sort of like it's shaded at the back, so it's going to be painted. Um, only a half bubble so all in all again a lovely kit there's a little bit of distortion on some of these square windows I just noticed it actually a sink mark let me just get the door right sorry about that that was my new computer case has just arrived a day early <laughs> I suppose I didn't want to work bank holiday Monday oh uh, Good Friday, I should say. <laughs> there we go. So I'll put them away for now. That's the clear parts. Uh, all in all, I'm I am actually liking this. Uh, the, the size of it to give you the uh, the wingspan's 236 millimeters. Uh, the fuselage length is 287 millimeters. So. You won't need a lot of shelf space for this to fit in. I shall go in my new cabinet very nicely. Uh, what can I say? Another winner, I think. My own personal... Um, and this is personally my own thoughts on it. I think another winner. This is going to be another beautiful model to build. Right, that's it for the... Uh, Meteor, Costa Meteor F8. Um, it's going to be a 
great build um, it really is going to be a very nice build and uh, as you can see here they've got a yellow tail on here but they've got one without a yellow tail as well but the same camouflage and uh, I think all the other stuff's the same on it as well so again back to the profile see what colour schemes we can do for the F8 there is quite a few conversions for the F8 as well I do know that um, it came in many guises and uh, I think I am no, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna start this. I've got enough on here as it is to do to start it with. So, just give you the number, which is a zero nine one eight two. That's the kit number. Let's see if you want to go out and order it. Uh, you can have a look online. Uh, they have stuff in their workshop as well, where they've been uh, how they've been doing it. Oh, um, designing it and uh, building the prototypes and all that sort of thing in there so it's, it's a good thing to have a look at and then they'll have the new stuff coming out on the website as well so for now for me and Carla see you all soon hopefully bye for now